Hi, my name is Sean Kine, and my project, a behavioral assay for evaluating sound change detection in mice, I wanted to study which parts of the auditory system are necessary for performing change detection tasks. To do this, I designed a two-choice change detection task that would present a sound to the animal in one of two ways. In an unchanging trial, the presented sound does not change and a reward is available to the mouse after the sound at the left port. Then in a changing trial, the sound changes halfway through the sound presentation and a reward will be available after the sound changes at the right port. In these trials, I limited the amount of time the mouse could receive the reward defined as the reward availability period or RAP. For the experiment, I used six head fixed mice and the first training stage taught the mice to lick from the ports to receive a reward. The data from stage one showed the number of times they licked the ports which increased subtly and by day 17, they had learned the task and could be moved on to stage two. In stage two, I focused on teaching the mice to lick during the RAP. While focusing on the timing of the licks, I didn't penalize them for licking at the wrong time or the wrong port. The first graph for the data in stage two shows the total number of trials divided into what they got correct on the right and left sides and what they missed on each side. A correct trial was counted as a hit, which meant they like during the RAP, a miss was counted when they did not lick either port for a trial. The data shows that they were getting a high percentage of hits and few misses. The second graph represented the percentage of total licks that occurred during the RAP for each side. The data shows that they were only getting a small fraction of the licks in the RAP compared to the total number of licks for each training session in graph three. I then moved the mice onto stage three since they were still getting hits on both sides and seemed to have learned the task. In stage three, I taught the mice the correct association between the sound and the corresponding lick port. I incorporated a silent penalty so when the mouse did something wrong, the trial would end without a reward and a new one would begin. In the first graph for stage three, I found that the number of mistrials had increased in comparison to stage two, and there was a significant decrease in the number of trials that were getting correct to the point where they were only getting a few of the changing trials correct. In graph two, I found that they were barely licking during the RAP, while graph three revealed that they were licking quite a lot despite missing many of the trials. After training the mice on stage three, it became clear that the mice had not learned the change detection task as we had planned. In reviewing the training stages, I learned a few things. In stage two, I focused more on the timing of the reward without penalties. And due to the lack of repercussions, they learned to constantly lick until they had received a reward. In stage three, the mice developed a bias toward the right port since the changing trial gave the reward sooner than the unchanging trial. I concluded that the mice were disengaged with the task and licking excessively. Looking forward, the next question was, how can I still teach the mice the change detection task? To address the problems, I implemented a buzzer noise that would work as a negative reinforcement to teach the mice when they licked the wrong port or at the wrong time. After several days of training on this stage, the data showed quite a difference. In the first graph, I saw a steady increase in the right and left hits with very few misses on both sides. The data also showed that their bias for the changing trials was due to stage three and had gone away with the use of a buzzer. In the second graph, I saw a considerable increase in the percentage of licks that occurred during the RAP, along with an overall decrease in the total number of licks for each training session in graph three. This showed us that the mice were more willing to engage in the task because they had no longer excessive licking and there was not a bias on either side. By analyzing what the mice had learned, I was able to implement a new stage that taught the mice to engage with the task more and learn the change detection task. With the success of the buzzer, I plan to implement it sooner with future cohorts of mice. And once a mouse is able to perform the, the change detection task, I will be able to implement optogenetic techniques allowing us to determine the role of different auditory brain areas in change detection tasks. Thank you.